Hi, I'm Mr. Biotech of SkinYourScreen.com, and this is a Photoshop tutorial on trying to emulate this really nifty effect by Bedrick Rios. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a menu made for the web using the JavaScript library jQuery. And in this particular example, it's got this really cool animation, but the part that I really liked was this very subtle effect off to the left where it looks like there's been a slit made in the page, and these menu items are popping through it in animated fashion. So to emulate this, we're going to use Photoshop. I'm using version CS3 here, although theoretically speaking, anything with layer style support will cover this. So that means probably Photoshop maybe 6.0 and up. So uh, let's start uh, by making a new file. I'm going to make one about 300 pixels by 300 pixels. There it is. And we want to fill the background with a nice neutral color. So if you click on your foreground color down here, I'm going to get something kind of in the brownish range and really desaturated. So right about there, just a hint of color. And using the paint bucket tool, I'm just going to fill layer one. So let's create a new layer. I'm going to title this one black line, and that'll be obvious why in just a sec. If you click this little button down here, it resets your, your foreground color to black and your background color to white. And with that default set, I'm going to use the pencil tool, not the brush tool, pencil tool, set for one pixel. And while holding down the shift key, I'm just going to draw a vertical line almost from the top, almost to the bottom. There we go. What the shift key does is it just constrains the drawing to 90 degree increments. So now I'm going to add some layer styles to this, just because it's really easy. I'm going to kill the fill opacity by reducing it to zero, so that made our line disappear, but we'll make up for it by using a gradient overlay. If you click here, you get the gradient options, so you can see we've got black fading to white in our gradient. I'm going to set the mode on this, however, to overlay the blend mode, and let's change our, our gradient. So I want it to go from black to transparent. So this is the foreground to transparent, and because we have black selected, it'll fade from black to transparent. That's good. So now we got something like that. Ideally, what we want is it to be black in the middle and then fade out to transparency at the edges. And luckily for us, Photoshop has an option to do that. If you click on the Style drop-down and go to Reflected, that gives us exactly what we want. Excellent. So now if you click and drag this layer to the New Layer button, you'll get a copy of it. And I'm going to retitle this one White Line. And using the Move tool, you can move it by mouse, but I generally prefer to do that by keyboard when I can. Um, if you just hit right once on your keyboard, it'll move it over one pixel. So we've just moved what is the white line over one pixel. Now if we hit the little switch button so that our white color is the foreground color, and we double click on the layer styles for this, we're going to go back to that gradient and click exactly the same drop down, only this time for the foreground to background color, it's going to be white to transparent, which is what we want. So click on that and OK. That's what we got. So we're making good progress so far. Now ideally, I want light to be coming from the right here and washing over my Photoshop image in that direction. So we're going to need a new layer for some highlights, which I'm going to call highlights. Really creative, I know. If you go to your elliptical marquee tool, on this new layer, with white selected as your foreground, I'm just going to arbitrarily draw kind of a tall, skinny, vertical oval. And if you click in the middle, you can kind of drag it where you want. I just want to get it nicely centered over these things. It doesn't have to be exact. Now if you go up to Select, Modify, and Feather, it'll give you an option like this. I'm going to feather about 14 pixels. Uh, it looks like it changed the selection a little bit. This becomes more dramatic, however, if you use your paint bucket tool and fill. You see that the by feathering, it kind of smooths out the edges of that selection. Now, if you hit Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC, it deselects. I'm going to change the blend mode to this entire layer, layer to overlay, and reduce the opacity to let's see, yeah, 40 something is good. I want it to be subtle, not overpowering. 38 sounds good. Okay, now for this next part, so we've got our, our light, our highlight right here where the light is hitting it, but this other part should be dark because if that's where our card is popping through, it's going to be beneath this plane over here. So to do that, I'm going to use a rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to zoom up here. 
so that I have pixel precision information. Zoom out just a tad, there we go. And what I want to do is create a rectangular marquee selection that's going to cover everything from the black line all the way to the bottom to the left of the image. So you can see the little dancing ants here, this is our selection. And if you right click in the middle of this, you have an option to layer via cut. And you'll notice that you have a new layer here. Uh, so what it did is it took everything in that selection and made it into a new layer uh, by cutting it out. So whatever was left remained on that highlights layer, which happens to be the highlight over here. So click on your layer 2, which is going to be our shadow in just a sec. If you hit Command-I on a Mac or Control-I on a PC, that will simply invert the color. So now we have a white specular highlight over here where light is hitting it this way, and we have a shadow over here where it looks like this half of the page is kind of sunk a little bit right here. This will be the ideal setup for the second part of this tutorial where we're going to insert a card popping out of this so that it resembles something like this with a shiny little grommet. I'm Mr. Biotech, and this has been the first part of our tutorial on inserting a card.